Hi, everyone, and welcome to reInvent. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you're enjoying our first ever virtual reInvent. And wow, it's been an action packed two weeks already, hasn't it? And we've had amazing keynotes from Andy, Swami, and others. And already we've seen so many announcements that can make a difference with our public sector customers and our industry unit customers. But before we go any further, I really have to say, Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, to everyone for tuning in, all of our partners and all of our customers. Speaking with you at reInvent is always one of my favorite moments of the year, of course, along with our public sector summit that we also did virtually this year in June. You are the change agents in your organizations. It's you who's transforming your business units, your organizations, and what you're doing every day to disrupt entire industries with cloud computing. This has been a crazy and incredible year of innovation, and it's been driven all by you. And I wanna thank you for always thinking big and staying committed to making a real and meaningful difference in the world. Today, I wanna to keep the momentum going. And over the next 60 minutes, we're gonna look at how all the work that you've done this year can serve for a foundation for a new era of innovation. There's no other way to say it. This has been a really unusual and crazy year, and every industry and sector has been affected and faced dramatic changes. And in the last nine months, it's proved that IT is critical. And the next nine months are an opportunity to shape the world in a new way in terms of how we use IT. It's exciting to see that IT and business leaders in every organization are assuming a seat at the leadership table. So today, I wanna to look at what's next and what do we do to even get started in a new and additional way to drive that pace of innovation. Let's start with a big question. How do you begin to understand a black swan event like a global pandemic? Well, I can answer that question with one word. Data. Data is being created faster than ever, and organizations are using data to gain real-time insights. This is a really important point, because over the last nine months, the value proposition of data has fundamentally changed. Getting the value from your data is no longer a project of the future. The time to act is now. Here's one important example. The role of data is helping researchers diagnose and treat COVID-19. At AWS, we launched the AWS Diagnostic Development Initiative in March. We invested over 20 million in credits to help researchers get faster insights into COVID and other infectious diseases. We've since received hundreds of applications from researchers around the world, and we're now supporting a diverse collection of projects including a data-driven effort by the University of California in San Francisco. There, there, the researchers are using AWS to sequence multiple COVID-19 genomes, and their goal is to more precisely diagnose COVID strands and tailor those treatments to the variations of the disease. Data has also helped financial services firms provide aid to small businesses impacted by the pandemic. In fact, Financial services startup called Cabbage used AWS to help, help business owners quickly apply the emergency assistance aid. Cabbage used these tools and services to automatically collect and extract what was needed for loan applications. They use that information to calculate loan amounts and submit those applications on, on behalf of all the small businesses. The good news is 80% of all those applications were approved for loans and fully automated. So this is a powerful example of how speed can make a real impact for the customers and the businesses that we all serve together. And of course, leveraging all the data has always come with hurdles from breaking down data silos to the cost of storage. And in short, gaining those insights from data is complex and it's hard. That's why during this year's reInvent, you're hearing a lot about how AWS can help with your data. 
And AWS and our partners can eliminate that heavy lifting of getting fast insights from your data. So we like to start at Amazon where we always start with our working backwards process from what our customers need. So we've created services that turn fast moving data into information, information into insights, and insights into action. Just so you can use a few of these services that you may need for your specific applications, here on the screen you can see Amazon Recognition, Amazon Kendra, Amazon Forecast, and others. So how did these services help solve your challenges? Well, let's take a look at a nearly universal problem, quickly trying to understand all the data that you have. And often data is scattered across all different parts of the organization. And the people assume they need to clean up their data before they use the cloud. But through these services like Lake Formation, you can bring your data in just as it is. You don't need to clean it up. And then after it gets into uh, Lake Formation, then you can clean, enrich, and classify all your data using services like artificial intelligence and machine learning. So what does this exactly mean? Well, let me give you an example. A healthcare customer who brings two different data sets to a data lake that contains different types of information, lake formation will unify multiple sources, identify duplicate, duplicate entries, and create a single data set for your use. The other value of data is the ability to quickly evolve the thinking and inform your actions. And by applying machine learning to the data, you get speed and learning. And this learning evolves with your mission. And because machine learning can adjust and evolve, your thinking evolves and your approach evolves to how you actually go about solving these problems. And we find that that brings speed to everything you're doing, which is super important especially during a time like COVID. Now I wanna show you a quick video that brings this idea to life because I could spend all day talking to you about this truly amazing technology at work. And the Cord 19 search engine is a tool that's powered by AWS machine learning. It allows researchers to gain these insights into tens of thousands of scientific research documents, all related to COVID-19. Now, using machine learning, the search engine looks across the vast data set and understands the content from within this data. That level of insight is un unbelievable. It allows researchers to pose questions and not only find answers to the documents, but also get specific answers. So let's just take a moment and take a closer look. The COVID-19 Open Research Dataset was published in March to accelerate research into COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2, and related coronaviruses. The dataset contains hundreds of thousands of documents, research, and literature about COVID-19 and the coronavirus group. At AWS, we asked, how can we help researchers easily search this massive library of information? And that's why we created Cord19 Search, which allows users to enter natural language search queries to get specific answers and surface relevant documents from this library. Suppose you have a researcher who wants to ask, what are COVID-19 symptoms? Here, you can see that Core 19 Search is directly bolding the answer. Dry cough, fever, fatigue, and loss of smell. This answer is being surfaced from a specific document in the corpus of information. And we can take a look at that document. And here you can see unstructured text that has been processed automatically to answer that question. This process was executed through services including Amazon Comprehend Medical. And here you're seeing an actual paragraph from that paper. And you can see that it's pulling out various symptoms, diagnoses, and locations, for example, eye pain, and the relationship between them. And you can see that this particular symptom happens within three weeks. All of this information is automatically being extracted as the processing happens within the cloud. Suppose we want to do another query and ask, when did COVID-19 start? Now we're asking a when question, so the answer should be a time-based answer. And here, we can see the question is being answered with December 2019 and we're being provided with relevant research papers that helped answer that question. 
By using AWS services, all of this happens within fractions of a second, which allows users to easily find information across unstructured documents, gain insights faster, and act on the information they learn. Wow, I just myself think that's a really powerful example because I've been able to see these things at work in the past. But what if your organization has the opposite challenge? What if you need to jumpstart your data-driven decision-making process? This is something we've heard a lot from customers. And as the world changes rapidly, customers need data to develop their common operating picture. Open data is a really powerful tool to do that. And accessing high-quality data at scale is only possible with cloud computing. That's why we've created the Registry of Open Data on AWS and we launched this in 2018. We launched it with 28 high quality data sets and within 12 months, the registry had grown nearly 3X. Today, there's more than 200 high quality data sets available on AWS. But most importantly, we curate this register for you to make sure that all the data sets provide real value to you. So I'm excited to share that we will soon add another valuable data set to the registry of open data. This is the US National Institute of Health and they're gonna soon be hosting all sequence read archive genomic data on this registry. Again, all sequence read archive genomic data on the registry. And this is the world's oldest and largest public re repository for DNA sequencing data. And this is a really, of course, important time for these types of data sets that can be used easily to advance the genomic research. And in the past, many of you guys have heard me talk about our thousand genome model that we worked with the National Institutes of Health in 2012. So now look at us, fast forward today, and we're creating even new value with the U.S. National Institutes of Health in this all sequence read archive. So it's very excited for all of you to be able to take advantage of this. Now, I'm excited that our first speaker today is showing how sharing high value data sets can advance medical research. We have Chief Scientist Naomi Allen and her team at UK Biobank, and they've collected a multi petabyte database of biological and medical data. Together with AWS and our AWS partner, DNA Nexus, they built an analytics tool that can be easily accessed by researchers worldwide, including researchers in low and middle income countries. This type of data sharing really holds incredible potential. And it's possible because of cloud and that access to all communities is a really important part of this project. So I'm excited to turn things over today to Naomi to explain more. So please virtually put your hands together for Naomi. Thanks, Teresa. UK Biobank is a uniquely powerful resource for public health research, which has collected and continues to collect a vast amount of biological and medical data on half a million people in the UK, and then makes it accessible for scientific research. Biobanking is a process where samples of human bodily fluid or tissue are collected for research use to improve our understanding of health and disease. The samples are often kept indefinitely or for several years, depending on the study, so that long-term future research can be carried out. Between 2006 and 2010, UK Biobank recruited half a million people in the UK aged between 40 and 69 years old. They provided blood, urine and saliva samples as well as detailed information about themselves and agree to have their health followed. This de-identified data, the largest and richest data set of its kind, have since been made accessible to researchers around the world who use it to make new discoveries about common human diseases and in turn, improve human health. What's unique about the UK Biobank resource is that it is prospective rather than retrospective, which means we follow up the health of participants over many years by linking to their electronic medical records. This enables researchers to examine why some people go on to develop certain diseases and others do not. For example, researchers using UK Biobank data found that participants with a high genetic risk for dementia and an unfavorable lifestyle, such as smoking and a high body weight, 
were three times more likely to develop dementia eight years later compared to those with a low genetic risk and favorable lifestyle, highlighting the importance of both genes and lifestyle in determining the risk of future disease. Our aim is to enable as many researchers as possible globally to access UK biobank data, to apply their expertise and imagination to it, and make scientific discoveries that will improve human health. One important feature of UK Biobank is its approach to data sharing. Uniquely, all of the data and samples are available to all bona fide researchers, both academic and commercial, worldwide for all types of health-related research that is in the public interest. This approach is already starting to produce dividends in terms of the amount of research that can be done rapidly and efficiently by making a very large and very deeply characterized data set widely available to lots of researchers. For example, there are currently 17,000 approved researchers in over 70 countries, 2,000 research projects are underway, yielding over 1,300 published papers so far. Given the number of participants and the size of the study, UK Biobank's data set is already significant. And over the next five years, that database will grow to 15 petabytes. The challenge we have is that the data are currently only provided to researchers for download, which is not a viable option for most. We realized we needed a new approach to data storage and the analytical capability to interpret them. We saw the breadth and depth of AWS services and solutions and new researchers like to take advantage of a range of different types of architectures. So we decided to collaborate with AWS to provide the computing power using the London region behind a new secure cloud-based research analysis platform developed by DNA Nexus, a well-established cloud-based computing and biomedical platform provider. This new platform will make the data more easily available to researchers in a highly cost-effective way. It's flexible enough to scale up as the amount of data expands and the number of researchers increase. Importantly, it will also enable data access to a broader range of researchers around the world by democratizing access to those who aren't able to download it. AWS has also generously pledged $1.5 million in total research credits to support access to approved researchers from lower middle income countries and early career researchers helping to gain more interest in increased opportunities more broadly. And we're using the cloud in different ways to solve problems. One example is that AWS is helping us to implement automated processing pipelines for our cardiac imaging data. Another is that they are helping us to reach out to the research community much more effectively. Using our local IT infrastructure, it used to take two to three days to send emails to all 17,000 researchers Using the AWS email service, we can now send these emails in as little as 15 minutes, ensuring there's no first comer advantage. Since we started releasing data to researchers in 2012, we've moved from being a resource predominantly used by UK based academics to being a globally accessed resource used by academic and commercial researchers, not just in clinical research and life sciences, but in biotech and engineering. Technology moves at a fantastic pace, and researchers in life sciences are at the forefront of leveraging these technologies, whether it be bioinformatics, AI, and machine learning, or data visualization tools. Storing the UK Biobank on AWS enables researchers to access not just the data itself, but these latest data tools and technologies. So not only is data access easier and more scalable, the resource can be used in more imaginative ways to make scientific discoveries. The success of UK Biobank relies on increasingly large amounts of data on the half a million study participants being readily accessible to all researchers. AWS provides a cloud infrastructure to deliver the necessary flexibility, scalability, and security to enable UK Biobank to democratize access to these unique data. This will help to unleash the imaginations of the world's best scientific minds, wherever they are, to make scientific discoveries that improve human health, both now and for future generations. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Naomi. So up until this point, we've looked at how AWS is making complex data clear. Now, I wanna spend a few minutes talking about how AWS is helping you innovate in complex environments. 
This is really what sets public sector and our industry customers apart. You've asked us how to operate everywhere and, and under every condition. And that's why we built the most secure and reliable global cloud infrastructure in the world. This means that you don't need to come to us. We deploy AWS to where you are and wherever your mission is. This is probably best illustrated by the investments that we've made for our public sector customers. And that includes, of course, our really loved customers in the defense and intelligence communities. This is a really personal commitment for me. We were first out of the gate and we have never wavered on our support for these communities. And when I joined AWS in 2010, we had a clear vision that we articulated. And we give you the world's best technology, which allows you to focus on your mission and move much faster. Nearly 10 years ago, we launched AWS GovCloud, which was one of a kind region. It met all requirements for ITAR, which was highly unusual at the time. And today we remain the only ITAR compliant region. And because our, of our customers' demand, we now have two GovCloud regions. And we remain the first and only cloud provider to offer regions to serve government workloads across a full range of US government data classifications. AWS also supports more classification levels, laws, regulations, and security frameworks than any other cloud provider. And you'll continue to see us keep that up on a global scale. 90 services in the AWS US East and West regions authorized under FedRAMP moderate authorization. 76 services in the AWS GovCloud region authorized under FedRAMP high. Again, our unwavering commitment and support to our customers has made AWS the provider of choice for all of you. And with meaningfully more services and features within those groups than anyone else, so thank you all because these services are possible because of the demand that you have created. So thank you again to all of our customers and partners. And as a result of this, mission owners from, as an example, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Army, and to the U.S. Southern Command and more, use all of these AWS services to move fast and deliver on their crit mission critical objectives. Let me just talk about the U.S. Navy for a minute. They've migrated their largest SAP enterprise resource planning system to the AWS GovCloud. This system helps six U.S. Navy commands train, equip, and maintain combat forces ready to go. The Navy achieved their migration in 10 months, listen to this, 10 months ahead of schedule by using AWS edge storage, edge computing capabilities. I, my heart grows. I'm so proud of the work that we've been able to do with our Department of Defense and to continue to support them and the national security customers. Again, the commitment we made over the past 10 years, we're still going and we have a lot to do together. The ability for us to navigate with you these complex environments is really critical for the business and the mission together. 5G is an example of something prompting a new era of innovation for the telecommunications industry. AWS is already helping partners and customers create their own offerings to capitalize on 5G. That includes Telefonica Germany, who started to visualize and virtualize its 5G core with AWS Outpost. With the energy sector, oil and gas companies, CEPSA Spain is applying AWS analytics and machine learning to reduce waste and energy use while increasing output. And within financial services, NASDAQ built a data lake on AWS that ingests 70 billion financial records a day. And this is just getting started. And Today, I'm also happy to announce that we're expanding our executive program called AWS Executive Education to leaders in the telecommunications, energy, and financial sector services industries. We started this program a couple of years ago because government executives and education executives told us that they wanted to learn more uh, as leaders 
and from leaders who had successfully embarked on driving their digital transformation. This short MBA style course is conducted jointly with leading universities around the world. It provides insights and knowledge based upon what we've learned and what we've done already. At the end of the program, participants join as an alumni network to continue sharing best practices and ideas together. And this year, we've moved to a virtual format, making it easier than ever to participate. And before I turn over the mic to our next speaker, I want to share one more example of a complex mission that's made easier with AWS. This June, I announced the launch of our new industry business unit, AWS Aerospace and Satellite. In the months since, our startup partner, Capella Space, has used AWS to support the launch of a new constellation of synthetic aperture radar satellites. And unlike traditional satellites, these satellites can see through cloud cover and darkness. And when fully deployed, the constellation will capture real-time coverage of every point on Earth. This data gathered can support many critical industries, from weather forecasting, to mapping, to defense and national security. It's my pleasure to welcome our next speaker, Capella Space and founder, CEO, Payam Benazada. Thank you, Teresa. Four and a half years ago, I decided to build this company out of a deep frustration. I was dumbfounded when flight MH370 went missing on its way from China to Malaysia. This wasn't a small plane. This was a Boeing 777 with 283 passengers. After months of searching by all sorts of Navy fleets, it was never found. I wondered that if a 777 plane goes missing on this one planet we call home, what else might be going missing that we're not even aware of? It turns out a lot goes missing. We as humans still do not have the ability to monitor our own planet reliably and persistently. With 50% of our planet covered with clouds and another 50% at night, more than 75% of our planet is currently invisible to Earth imaging satellites, creating a significant gap in coverage and an unacceptable shortcoming of capabilities. Fast forward to today, Capella Space has designed, built, launched, and now operates the only commercially available American all-weather and all-light imaging capability from space with a resolution of better than 50 centimeter. Before Capella, the only organizations that could do this were governments of a few countries, and even then, they had to spend a billion dollars to get one of these satellites up which is not enough to provide the persistent coverage of Earth that's truly needed. In putting together the puzzle, building and operating satellites is solving part of it, an important part. However, the other part of the puzzle is focused on how quickly we can get this data into the hands of the customers who really need it. Traditionally, this has been a slow and tedious process and can involve a lot of manual input. The process of requesting imagery and receiving it from space typically takes longer than 24 hours on average, which is just way too long and unacceptable. It takes us a few minutes to conduct a search on our phone, less than an hour to order and receive warm food at our doorsteps, and only a few hours to travel across the US. Why should it take more than 24 hours to receive imagery from space? This brings us to our partnership with AWS. The ability to use AWS ground stations globally and their proximity to the AWS data centers means faster delivery timelines for our customers. We're able to scale up our computational power in the AWS cloud to quickly process our imagery, helping get that image delivery in less than an hour instead of the average of 24. That is a remarkable improvement and a mission enabling capability for our customers. 
This will empower our customers to use space data in ways never possible before. Using Amazon SageMaker and a suite of machine learning services on AWS also provides us with an end-to-end -end solution to be able to complete projects quickly and with little overhead to manage multiple tool chains. For instance, we were able to deploy a labeling tool and a new change detection feature for our data application in less than two days. And most importantly, working with AWS has helped ensure our data is encrypted with multiple layers in transit and at rest and keeps our data secure with AWS GovCloud. Looking ahead though, our ability to understand change on our planet is going to be even more critical in the 21st century. And this speed at which we can act on new information is going to be an important driver of the outcome of our actions. We need to have a non-terrestrial based capability that allows us to predict, monitor, and track both man-made and natural disasters. Our ability and our capabilities will help shed light on deforestation in Amazonia, enable firefighters to see through the smokes of wildfires, provide mapping for urban development, or simply provide transparency into the supply chain ahead of the next global pandemic. The key to creating a better world lies in the timely observation of our planet. And Capella is adding a fundamental tool to our toolkit in order to be prepared for the challenges of tomorrow. And with our partnership with AWS, we will jointly deliver information at an unprecedented speed and efficiency. Thank you. So we've talked a lot about the AWS services that allow you to deliver results. But one of the most important parts of digital transformation is your people. And look, there's no way around it. This has been a tough year on everyone. And millions of workers have faced layoffs. Millions of students have had to change their learning environment. And education has just been interrupted and disrupted. Individuals are being asked to upskill reskill to meet the new, the new demands of a rapidly changing economy. And at the same time, the pandemic is crippling the budgets of government and educational institutions at a time when these institutions are needed more than ever. Let's look a little bit closer at, what, at what's actually been happening in education. More than 1.2 billion students worldwide were forced out of the classroom when the pandemic first hit. And tens of thousands of universities and schools around the world switched to online learning. These institutions need to dramatically scale. And with AWS and our EdTech partners, we have been working with them tirelessly to make sure that they can scale. A good example is the Egyptian Ministry of Education, who scaled on AWS to handle more than 76 million page views with 2.5 million unique educational students users taking advantage of this. In Brazil, AWS helped the country's largest K-12 system offer online education to 1.3 million students. And this September, the global ed tech Industry, Blackboard, and our good partner used AWS to scale 35 times and support 1.6 million concurrent users. Thank you, Blackboard, for working with us on this project. Many of the leaders I speak with expect this trend to continue, especially among secondary institutions. And there are two major forces driving this change. First is the need to lower cost while reaching new students who can't really afford a traditional four-year degree. Second's the reality that today's students need to learn skills that allow them to step directly into a job and be able to work back from those skills that are required. And as the world's largest provider of cloud computing here at AWS, we see a really unique opportunity to teach those skills that are directly aligned to, again, those in-demand job 
cloud skills that are already available. We take a collective approach to this issue, and we work with our customers and our educational leaders to build a stackable approach to learning that helps these individuals learn new skills and build a career at the same time. Let me give you a good example. On AWS Educate program, we teamed up with our partner Pearson to develop the first UK higher national qualification in cloud computing. This is the equivalent of an associate degree in the US, and it's recognized in 60 countries and delivers through 500 Pearson centers around the world. We also collaborated this October with Swinburne University in Australia to help announce the launch of the country's first degree in cloud computing. We helped launch dozens of programs in the U.S. since 2019 and internationally in Spain, India, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Bahrain, and the U.K. And of course, one of the biggest job creators in many communities is small and medium businesses. And we've commissioned an independent report in the U.K. to determine the impact of AWS in small and medium businesses. The researchers found that AWS, together with initiatives like the UK's G Cloud, has made it easier for small and medium businesses to bid government contracts. And according to their findings, 150 companies used AWS in 2019 to deliver services to the government, and over half of these, of these companies were small and medium enterprises. Now, that is a big change from 2010 when 80% of government IT work was done by only 18 suppliers. So again, you've gone from 18 to 150. This change really has helped expand the tech economy across the entire country. And we really, we really love this, seeing these, all these new small and medium businesses pick up uh, the work from government. And we believe that these benefits can really be realized by all the small and medium businesses worldwide. Now, by supporting small and medium businesses, we can help create a sustainable future. And that's why Amazon is so proud to support a new development program for women-owned and minority-owned businesses in the renewable energy sector. This program is run by the American Council on Renewable Energy. And Amazon's going to sponsor the participation of small and medium businesses in this new program. Participants will have a no cost, will get no cost benefits including legal services and access to renewable energy builders, buyers, financers, and other targeted support. And of course, one of the most common small businesses in the world is small-scale farming, which is near and dear to my heart, being from a farming community. And according to the World Bank, it's a major driver of economic growth. 65% of poor working adults made a living through agriculture. And in tw this was just in 2016. And agriculture in some countries can account for 25% of the GDP. So uh, despite its importance, a lack of connectivity can really hold farming back. So by harnessing the power of AWS and cloud computing, with machine learning services, the social enterprise we farm is connecting a network of small scale farmers. This network can help farmers increase their yields, grow their business and continue to feed the world. So again, it is my pleasure to introduce the CTO of we farm, Adam Nielsen, and he's gonna explain more about what we farm is doing to connect these businesses and farmers around the world. Thank you, Teresa. WeFarm is the world's largest platform for small-scale farmers. We have over two and a half million members who use WeFarm to share knowledge within the community and buy farming inputs through our marketplace. The small-scale farming industry is the most important and one of the biggest industries on the planet. 70% of the food on your kitchen shelf is put there by the one billion people that this industry employs globally. Our mission is to enable farmers who drive this industry to fulfill their economic potential, and this mission is at the heart of everything that we do. We're building a platform for hundreds of millions of people worldwide so they can tap into their community's buying power, access its knowledge, and ultimately rewrite global supply chains so they can be more successful. 
The idea for WeFarm came about because we realised that the only thing this community lacked was connectivity, not knowledge, not charity, as many top-down organisations seem to believe. Lack of connectivity to one another was stopping incredibly valuable farmer knowledge from being shared at scale. We knew a platform that connects farmers would give them the tools needed to solve these challenges. So we built it. A farmer can use the WeFarm digital platform both online and offline, and it's completely free for them to use. This ensures all farmers can connect and benefit from the support of the wider community, even those who are thousands of miles away and seamlessly leverage the community's knowledge across the network. Using AWS services, including Amazon S3 for storage, SNS, SQS for asynchronous messaging, EKS for compute cluster, and AWS Lambda for serverless processing, our platform is able to operate with or without an internet connection and allows farmers in the network to support questions via SMS. Our system reads and analyzes the queries that are submitted, looking for things like farming type, product type, and language, and then directs the inbound questions to the most relevant farmers to provide answers. As we continue to build out our platform and collect more data, we ran into a couple of challenges. For example, the data we were receiving wasn't clean. We received messages written in slang or with typos, across a number of languages that we support, making it incredibly difficult to process. By leveraging the cloud, we've been able to build algorithms and machine learning models that clean the data and interpret language, topic, and intent. This combined with our custom-built NLP libraries means that we support farmers across a number of languages and seamlessly match questions to suited responders. And through these questions and answers, we're able to gain real-time insights into farming trends from season to season. Once we developed the solution that enabled farmers to know more, which was one of our key value propositions, we tackled the next challenge to enable farmers to buy smarter. We expanded our platform by creating a digital marketplace. Farmers typically buy essential items like seeds or fertilizer, for instance, as an end consumer, which would include additional costs of all the margins of the people in the middle. Our platform's marketplace solved this by allowing our members to access more value through the collective buying power. Through WeFarm, they buy as a part of a group, not as an individual being charged a premium. We partner with local retailers as well as national and global brands and use the insights gathered from our wider platform to provide farmers access to the products and services they're talking about, but at a fairer price. Since WeFarm's launch in 2015, more than 30 million conversations have taken place on the platform, and our members continue to spend over $1 million in products each week through our marketplace, and this just keeps growing. Working with AWS has helped us manage this scale and our substantial growth as a startup by doing a lot of the heavy lifting, saving us time and allowing us to focus our efforts on what's most important, and that's to build great products for our members. Another key benefit of the cloud, which is particularly valuable to small teams, is that it allows us to test rapidly and iterate quickly. For instance, we tested many different approaches for our platform's marketplace. As the cloud allowed us to quickly deploy prototypes, get them into the hands of farmers and rapidly analyze and optimize the overall user experience of the service, if we'd have hosted it ourselves, it would have significantly slowed down the process and the release cycle would have been much more laborious. It's been incredible to watch this platform grow. When I first joined WeFarm, we had a few thousand members. Now, just a few years later, we're setting our sights on connecting 100 million people. Farmers have incredibly valuable knowledge that should be shared, and the size of their community has to be leveraged for their benefit. I'm certain that WeFarm's growing community of farmers has the power to revolutionize global supply chains that impact every single person on this planet. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Adam. When I started the AWS public sector 10 years ago, we set out with a really simple vision. In addition to all the amazing Amazon leadership principles, we've always said we want to pave the way for disruptive innovation and help build a better world. We knew the strength of our technology, but we were relying on innovative companies like WeFarm to use cloud computing to really help us use this technology to change the world. And the work that Adam and his team are doing is really helping deliver on that promise. 
And before I close today, I want to share with you one more announcement to help deliver on that promise. Every year, my team and I try to do something to give back during reInvent. And this year, I'm honored, along with my entire team, to make a donation to two organizations working to reduce hunger around the world. First, we're donating to the UN World Program. Last year, the World Food Program delivered food assistance to more than 80 million people in 75 countries. We're also donating to Three Square Food Bank in Las Vegas. We're so sad not to be in Las Vegas this year. We always have such a wonderful time, and we know how hard the city's been hit by the pandemic. So I hope that our small gesture provides some relief to the communities world, worldwide that we love so dearly and have loved us through our partnership. So again, thank you all for all your work and all your effort, and we hope everybody can give back a little bit today. Now, we're out of time. As always, this goes by so fast. But before I go, I want to leave you with my traditional list of go-do's. This year, I want to leave you with four requests. First, I want you to set a bold vision for your business or organization. Use the learnings from the 2020 pandemic response to imagine and reimagine your organization as a digitally enabled business. Second, I want you to identify data in your organization that has unrealized value. We talked a lot about data today. Ask what insights that you could drive from it. Bring that data to life with the tools from AWS. And have your partners work with you to provide the most innovative information, insight, support, and action from your data. Three, empower people through your organization with training and increase the diversity within your organization, please. People within your organization need new skills, and you need to cast a wide net to fill those jobs of the future with greater diversity and inclusion. And start by visiting aws.training to explore more than 500 free digital courses that can be delivered when and where it's convenient for you and your organization. And now my final go-do for you today. It's a little bit different. Normally, I'd be inviting you to join us for our party that we always have that everybody loves to come to. But in the spirit of giving back this year, I'm asking you to please take some time and commit random acts of kindness. Spend some extra time with your family, even if it's through video or phone calls. And if you can, take some time to support a cause that's personal to you. We're so blessed in so many ways, including being able to welcome you to this virtual conference. It's important to pay it forward when you can. I really want to thank you all for joining us here today for this first ever virtual reInvent. And I really hope to see you back in Las Vegas next year so we can have our, uh, our normal and not a new normal. But again, please take time, do some acts of kindness, take time for yourself, be safe, be blessed. Thank you and see you next year.